Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. As Shalef um, said and Simran said, hallelujah, Lord's glory in your life will also be, hallelujah, a light. Sorry, not Simran. I meant Shalina in the first service. <laughs> uh, that, that the Lord's glory in your life will also be a song of rejoicing for someone else. So be who you are in Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. I'm going to jump right into the sermon. Last week, we went through the plains of A. Hallelujah. We went through the plains of A and there we faced our first defeat after entering the promised land. Hallelujah. And we suffered defeat, death, and loss. And then what we did, we went back to God. That's where everything starts from. That's where everything flows from. So we go back to God and we let God pinpoint what the problem was. The defeat was not the problem, but the disobedience was the problem. We dealt with it in a way that God prescribed. Hallelujah. And now we are ready to go forward and further penetrate into the promised land that God has already said, I have given it to you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. So far, we have crossed three important milestones in the promised land. The Jordan has parted. The Jericho walls have fallen. Hallelujah. And the defeat at Ai has is now going to turn into a victory. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. We are the Joshua generation. And thank you, Jeel, for reminding us that. So I don't have to do it right now. <laughs> That's good. We are the Joshua generation. Hallelujah. We have lost a battle at I, but now since we repented and obeyed and come into um, reconciliation with God, we are able to move forward. Hallelujah. The golden rule that we established last week, and we can add one more to the list of rules that we have been adding. Hallelujah. And that, that rule is this. We might face failures on our journey of faith, but it does not have to be permanent. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. We put the right food first. We ask the right question and we choose the right thing to do. Hallelujah. It's not the failure, but how we deal with the failure defi defines the next course of our journey. So here we are in the plains of I once again. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. You know, there is a proverb. Uh, in the secular world. And it says, uh, when a winner makes a mistake, uh, he says, I was wrong. But when a loser makes a mistake, he says, it wasn't my fault. Right? Thankfully, Joshua generation, you and I are winners. We have the winner mentality. We know how to step back and we know how to let God speak into our disobedience. We know how to correct ourselves so that we can go into the next phase of victory that God has already planned for you and I. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Remember, it is not the failure that defines who you and I are. It is how we deal with the failure defines the next phase of the journey. Thank you, Lord. We talked about Thomas Alva Edison as I ended the message last week, right? And we know, we know the example that his entire life's inventions were burned away. And he stood there and this is what he said. And I quote, he said, there is great value in disaster. All the mistakes are burned up. Thank God we can start anew. And let me tell you what happened. Three weeks after the fire that had burned up his life's invention, Edison managed to deliver his first phonograph ever. Oh, yeah. Hallelujah. Three weeks and he turned it around. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Henry Ford, Pastor Virol's favorite guy. He, he mentions Henry Ford more than he mentions me in his sermon. So uh, I can say that Henry Ford is by far his favorite inventor. And Henry Ford agrees with Thomas Alva Edison. Uh, and he says, mistake is an opportunity to begin again, Amen. this time more intelligently. Amen. 
Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. And a British preacher, F.W. Robertson, he was a big preacher in the 18th century. This is what he said in his, one of his sermons when he preached in 1849. And I quote, Life, like war, is a series of mistakes. And he is not the best Christian or the best general who makes the fewest false steps. Poor mediocrity may secure that, but he is the best who wins the most splendid victories by the retrieval of mistakes. Amen. Forget the mistakes. Organize victories out of the mistakes. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. You and I, we are the best Christians. We do not count our victories by the wars we lost. We count it by what we gained. Amen. Because every day, you and I crouch a little bit more into the enemy territory. I was talking with somebody last week, and uh, the person said that so-and-so thing happened, and I kind of lost my battle with my family. And I had to, you know, kind of come into a disagreement. And I said, you know what? Even if there was a disagreement, God can give you a heart of repentance. Go ahead, repent, and that way you will capture a little more land, a little by little. You have not gone all in, but you were one step ahead than what you were yesterday. Amen. Right? Hallelujah. So forget the mistakes. Organize victories out of the mistakes. Amen. Hallelujah. So... <clears throat> How do we get up again once we have fallen? Isn't that a big question for all of us when we face a failure? How do I get up again? How do I gather the strength to start again after having faced a failure? Hallelujah. What does it take for you and I to make another glorious victory right after we have failed miserably? Hallelujah. What help do I get from the word of God to be able to regain the lost eye? Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. And that lands into our today's sermon. Uh, and I've named it Regaining Lost Grounds. Hallelujah. If you have lost your battle at eye, don't worry. God has a strategy so you can regain that uh, that defeat and make it your own victory. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. And as I said last week, these principles of warfare and battle, they are timeless. Just like our God, they are transcendent. They are about time, space, and matter. They were the same, just like our God, yesterday, today, and forever. Hallelujah. His principles don't change. His strategies don't change. His blessings don't change because they are from the God. God who does never change. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. So feel free to bring these principles again into your personal life, into your private life, into your family life, into your secular life. And I guarantee that you will definitely turn into victory. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. So <clears throat> Joshua chapter 8 outline some wonderful principles. And here is what I'm going to begin with. Verses 1 and 2. Let's read Joshua chapter 8, verses 1 and 2. Now the Lord said to Joshua, Do not be afraid, nor be dismayed. Take all the people of war with you, and arise and go up to Ai. See, I have given into your hand the king of Ai, his people, his city and his land. Hallelujah. Sorry. Thank you, Jesus. So right away, there is my, I'm going to be very fast and dig right into it because I have a lot of grounds to cover and uh, I will not have enough time. Verse one and two, point number one here is start with a new beginning. God gives them a new beginning after they have once failed. Hallelujah. Once Israel has judged the sin that had defiled the camp. Once that is taken care of, God is now ready to be able to speak with them once again. Amen. Hallelujah. And what does he say? In his mercy, he's ready to direct them to the next conquest. He says, hallelujah, verse 1. He says that, uh, now the Lord said to Joshua, do not be afraid nor be dismayed. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. It doesn't matter how big or how many mistakes you and I make. The worst mistake of all is not to try again. Hallelujah, right? Thank you, Jesus. Isaiah 43, 
and verse 18 says this, and I read with you, Isaiah 43, verse 18. Hallelujah. God says, do not remember the former things, nor consider the things of old. Next verse, please. Hallelujah. Do not dwell in the past. Jesus says, don't be there. Yesterday is yesterday. You have tomorrow to look forward to. Verse 19, can we get it? See, I am doing a new thing. Hallelujah. Now it shall spring up. Do you not perceive it? Yes. Hallelujah. I am making a way in the wilderness and streams in the wastelands. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. If your eye was a wasteland, God is going to make streams of fresh water flow through it. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus, I receive it. Hallelujah. Isaiah 43 verse 18. If you don't get any anything else from today's message. I want you to make this verse your own. God says, do you not know it? Look, I am doing a new thing. The old is gone. Your past is gone. Your old Instagram pictures is gone. The thing that haunts you in your dreams is gone. God has done a new thing for you. Do you not perceive it? Amen. Hallelujah. Our God is a God of new beginnings. Amen. Hallelujah. And here's what I want to say to you. If you know me and if you have shared your personal struggles with me, I have always said this to you and I will make it public today. It's not your own personal uh, help from me anymore. I'm just going to make it public. The number one rule of starting again is starting from where you fell. God does not want you to go back to the start line and start all over again. Where you fell, there you get up and there you start walking. You are not, hallelujah, supposed to go back from where you began. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. See, Joshua got defeated at I. And God tells him to start the victory from I. He doesn't ask him to go back to Gilgal or Jordan. He says, start right from here in the face of victory. That is my Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. If there is defeat, Jesus is right there in its face with you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Second point that I want to make here is that God is your encourager. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Where do you start? You start with the word of God. Because that is a great encouragement. We start with the voice of God. We start with a new promise. We start in a new way, in the new phase of our journey. Hallelujah. But be sure to ask God how he wants us to proceed. Right? And here's what uh, God says. Verses 1 and 2 again. Joshua chapter 8, verse 1 and 2. Now the Lord said to Joshua, four things strike out uh, for me. Do not be afraid. Take all the people of war with you. I have given into your hand this land. Its spoil and its cattle you shall take as booty for yourselves. Four things. And this is what I'm going to speak to today. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. The very first part. <clears throat> Do not be afraid nor be dismayed. Only God can say this because God is the real encourager. Amen. There is so much encouragement for your defeat and my defeat in the word of God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. What happens? Okay, what happens when we fail? Two things. We get discouraged and then there is doubt, right? We get discouraged that how miserably did I fail? I had a victory over this battle yesterday. How did I fail again? And then there is doubt that how, after uh, failing so foolishly, I'm going to stand up and face the next phase. Mm -hmm. Discouragement. Let me tell you, these two Ds are never from God. Mm -hmm. They always come from your enemy and my. They come from the enemy of our souls. Mm -hmm. He does not want you to be encouraged. He does not want you to trust again on yourself. And that's why he brings these two Ds in your life when we face a failure. Hallelujah. But God is our encourager. Hallelujah. Turn with me to Judges chapter 6, verse 12 uh, uh, to 18. We all know this. Verse 12. We know Gideon is afraid of the Palestinians. And he is... Uh, um, he is, uh, what is he doing? He is uh, threshing the wheat in the wine press. 
threshing is not on the threshing floor he is hidden away from public eyes because he is scared hallelujah he is scared to death that palestinians are going to kill him and what does god say god says to a fearful and hidden hidden gideon god is with you oh mighty man of valor Hallelujah. When your heart is fearful, God calls you brave. Amen. Hallelujah. That is what your God and my God is. Amen. That is the one who is your encourager and my encourager. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Do not be afraid, nor be dismayed. Once the sin is dealt, God's encouragement is with you again. Amen. The promise is restored again. Hallelujah. Let's go to the uh, verse 1 again and the second part. Now, <clears throat> God is your instructor. Not only he is your encourager, but he is also your instructor. Second part, he says, take all the people of war with you. Remember what the spies said? Take 3,000. You don't need to weary everybody because the men of I are very little. Let me tell you, there were 12,000 people in I. Not even. Okay? And so now God clearly has a different strategy than the strategy of men. Hallelujah. Men said few is okay. They were self-reliant on their own strength. Whereas God's strategy is completely different. God says, go full throttle. Do not relent. Use all that you have. Because I is a very strategic battle. It's a very important, the, I think the most important. Every battle after they win, after I, are just their positional advantage. And God being with them. But I was the one that was very difficult to handle. And so God says, bring all the men of war with you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. God is your instructor. <clears throat> the Lord also, now God knows our enemy better than we do. All agree? Yes. yes. Although we might know his strategies, but God knows him because he is the one who created him in the first place, right? So anyways, um, Lord asked Joshua to take advantage of I's self-confidence. I know that we have defeated Israel once and we can do it again. And they have the advantage of the height as well. And so now God says they are very confident and self-reliant. Now you go and I will show you how to win over because of that self-confidence. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. See, we always face attacks from one of these three things in our life. It's either our flesh or the world or the devil himself right? Hallelujah. Only God can tell you which battle are you fighting right now. If it is your flesh that you are fighting, God will pinpoint it out to you that this is what you need to correct in your flesh. If it is the world who is attacking you, God will tell you, flee to safety. I am your strong tower. And if the devil is attacking you, God will stand there and say, like he said to Job, you know, go and check it out. How much strength do you have, devil? These guys are mine. You cannot touch them. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Only God can give you, hallelujah, instructions how to face your flesh, the world, or the enemy. Thank you, Lord. Psalm 38, hallelujah, and 32, sorry, and verse 8 says this. God says, I will instruct you and teach you in the way you should go. I will guide you with my eye. Hallelujah. Look, God's eye is upon you. Amen. How good is he? Amen. Even when you fail, his eye is upon you. And he says, right, when Joshua and Samara are sitting and they are doing something, you know, sometimes I have to tell them, look at them and say, okay, okay. That's how God instructs us, like a mother's love, right? And, and we got to understand, hallelujah, because they know what happens after they don't understand. So, so you and I better be good, good children of God, right? Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Let God be your instructor rather than men. 
Thank you, Jesus. Because his plans are better. His ways are higher. Hallelujah. He can turn your morning into dancing. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. And the fourth thing that I want to say from verses 1 and 2 is, I have given you this land. Also, he has given the spoils, the cattle, and the booty to take for yourself. Okay, two things stand out from here. Number one, God is your blesser and your promise keeper. Amen. God is your blesser. The God is the one who keeps promises. Remember Joshua chapter 6, verse 2. God says, go, I have given you this land. And once again, he says exactly the same thing. His promises never change. Amen. They are the same because God is the same. Amen. They are faithful because God is faithful. God says, I have given you this land. God is a promise keeper. He never breaks his promise. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. D.L. Moody. D.L. Moody said this once. He said, God never made a promise that was too good to be true. <laughs> right? Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. But every promise must be claimed by faith. Everything that you and I receive in our journey of faith, hallelujah, is through faith. Turn with me to Hebrews chapter 4 and verse 2. This is a whole book about faith and hallelujah. Oh, wow, Jesus, hallelujah. For indeed, the gospel was preached to us and to them as well. But the word which they heard did not profit them. Why it did not profit them? Because it was not mixed with faith for those who heard them. The Jews hear the same gospel. The Hindus hear the same gospel. The Sikh hear the same gospel. You and I hear the same gospel. Why does it take impact in your life and my life? Because we mix it with faith. The others mix it with skepticism. Hallelujah. So if your heart is skeptic this morning, I want you to be encouraged to remove it. Amen. Hallelujah. Mix it with faith. Amen. Okay. That's the recipe. If you want to know my secret recipe. <laughs> Hallelujah. Not that one. This one. <laughs> Hallelujah. Unless the promises of God are mixed with faith, they do not accomplish anything. Mm. You must access it with faith. Hallelujah. So have faith. When God says Canaan is yours, believe that it is yours. When God says I is yours, believe that it is yours. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. God is your blesser. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. This is, this just, uh, this is so funny. It's not even funny. It's sarcastic. Achan, Achan must be so sad right now. God says, it's spoil and it's cattle. You shall take as booty for yourself. I hope Achan had waited only a few more days for God to let him take it. Amen. Hallelujah. How, how wonderful it would have been if he would have been in compliance with God, what God asked him to. He brought death upon himself, upon his family, and he lost all the booty that he collected. And remember, we saw that he hid it in his tent. He was not able to enjoy it. And he lost his life because of that. Also, he lost entering Canaan because of that, because he never saw life again. And now, here is what God says. See, when you and I wait upon God's timing, it is the best gift for you and I. He will not, God is faithful. He will not relent anything from you and I because we are his children. Amen. Why would he relent? Hallelujah. It is only about obedience. Amen. It's not about God has withheld this from me. Amen. Right? Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. When we run ahead of God, we rob ourselves of God's riches, Amen. just like Achan did. Amen. Hallelujah. I want you to be encouraged. Don't run away from obedience. Don't run ahead of God. Let God set the right time for you. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. When we run ahead of God, we hurt God's heart. We hurt others and we hurt ourselves as well. So don't run ahead of God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Uh, Priyal once said this. And I always remember, she, I think she, when she, good old days when she was on Facebook, she posted it once. And I still remember, uh, she said, there is nothing good outside of God's will. And there is nothing bad 
inside of God's will. Hallelujah. How sweet is that? I only hope Aiken heard, uh, read Priyal's Facebook post, but he did not. I'm so sorry for him. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. There is nothing good outside of God's will, and there is nothing bad inside of God's will. Hallelujah. That brings me to my second point. Sorry, guys, I'm running, but there is a lot to cover. And my second point, hallelujah, verses 3 to 13. And the second point is get a new strategy from God. Hallelujah. Get a new beginning. Second one, get a new strategy. Hallelujah. Our God is a God not only of new beginnings, but also of infinite variety. If you and I are bored with one technique, don't worry. God has another. If you and I, one strategy doesn't work, don't worry. God has many others. Hallelujah. And that's exactly what he does. Hallelujah. He, and why does God do this, you know? He changes his methodology sometimes. And I'll tell you why. So that you and I will, st will not start depending on what we have achieved yesterday. Right? Paul says that I forget what was behind me and I look in the front and I run so that I will receive the prize. Amen. Right? So that we will not depend upon, so that we will not glory in the past victory and will not boast about ourselves. Because then our dependence will be on our experience rather than what God is going to do new in our next battle. Amen. Right? So there is this eagerness that we run when we run with God, that God wants us to set up in that, okay, what is he going to do this time? What is he going to do next? Hallelujah. That is your God and my God. Hallelujah. <clears throat> Don't make the same mistake twice. They went with a few people. God said, no, no, no. All of you go. Don't make the same mistake twice. Right? Proverbs 3 verse 4 and 5, we all know right? Do not lean on your own understanding. Hallelujah. Yes. But <clears throat> hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Lean on God's understanding so that he will make your paths prosper. Thank you, Lord. Looking at own understanding was 3000 men, but looking at God's understanding is use all the strength that you have. God, God says, do not make the same mistake twice. If you have learned from it, that's enough learning move forward, right? Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. See, when the battle is big, we will always trust God. But the problem is when the battle is small. The men of I were very little. That's why Joshua and his men trusted on their own. When the battle is big, we know that only God can do it, right, Dinah? Then uh, the doctor does not matter anymore. But when the battle is little, when we have to be faithful in tithes, when we have to be good stewards of the money and talent God has given us, when we have to be kind to the people who uh, kind of offend us and come right at us, that's where we lose because we depend on ourselves. But God wants you and I to depend. Even for the small I, God says, look at me. I got my eyes on you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Second thing, as I said, God asked Joshua to begin at I. The place of defeat, God will show him how he will turn into a place of victory. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. <clears throat> Thank you, Jesus. And God gives a completely different strategy. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Let me explain a little bit and very quickly uh, what happened at I. We're not going to read the whole thing. I'm just going to quick give you a quick snapshot so you are with me. And if Shalef can show me the map that I sent, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Okay, awesome. This is Pastor Virol's favorite job. Unfortunately, I have to do it, but it's okay. He, You see the River Jordan? That's what he would say, right? He'll make like a mind map. <laughs> Anyways, all the girls are happy. Girl power, yay! <laughs> you see the River Jordan on the on the my right and your left? That's where they crossed and went to Gilgal. The first red dot is Gilgal. Right below Gilgal is Jericho. I want you to pay attention. And then from Jericho all the way to I. And after I, there is another little red dot called Bethel. So this is what God said. God said, 
Gilgal is Joshua's primary headquarter. That's where he operates from, not from Jericho. Remember Gilgal, the promise, the stones? That's where you operate, not from Jericho. So <clears throat> Joshua goes from Gilgal. God says, by the night, send 30,000 men by the way of the valley, the, the little green dot that goes under. Go around and camp in between Bethel and Ai so that I will not be able to see you. Go by night, it's a covert night operation. They go and camp there. Now, Joshua stays in the camp with the rest of the people, okay? The, the armies are divided. And the next night, Joshua goes with the rest of the men from the north and camps in the, at the north of Ai. You see the little green loop on top of Ai? That's where they, land and then the little black line here the word of God says that there was a valley and God placed it strategically so even if I seize them they cannot cross the valley overnight so God says to them go and go to the north of I and stay there and in the next day morning the third day Joshua and some men go from the north of I into the plain sight of I as if they are saying Abel Mujemar. Okay, so they come, only few men, 5,000 remain on north of Ai. Joshua and the rest of the men come in the plains of Ai, and the king of Ai sees it. He is self confident. He says, Let's go, get him again. All the men of Ai, the word of God says in verse 17, not only Ai, but all the men of Bethel as well. Aim for Ai, God will give you Bethel as well. <laughs> Aim for I, because God's strategy is not just I, but I and Bethel, both. Verse 17, Bethel and I, both the armies run behind Joshua and the little party. And what does Joshua does? Joshua says, oh my God, I'm scared again. And they retrieve. And when they retrieve, they go through the valley and they go up and Joshua raises his spear. And at that point, there is no turning back for the uh, armies of Ai and Bethel. The ambush from between Bethel and Ai goes and captures. The ambush from the north goes and captures. Set Ai on fire. The king sees back. No way. He starts going back to rescue. Joshua goes from this side, captures. These guys come from Ai, capture. All done. Okay, this is battle strategy. This is not 12,000 men, 3,000 men. This is all in. That is what God, this is how God wants you and I to attack our enemy. Amen. Hallelujah. So the strategies are very different, okay? As I said, God is a God of infinite variety. What happened? I'll give you a comparison. Jericho and I. What happened in the two battles? One week of marches around the city, no marches, okay? Jericho attacked in broad daylight. This was a covert night operation, ambushed by night. Hallelujah. In front of, the, they, they went around the city of Jericho in front of Jericho's eyes. They could see them going around, but I could not see them. All the army went to Jericho, but here the army was divided into different parties according to God's strategy. Hallelujah. Jericho, God conquered Jericho. I, God asked Joshua and his men to go and conquer it. Amen. Only one thing is constant in both these two wars, that God's faithfulness never changed. Amen. They won because of obedience to God's command. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Ambush comes, defeats I, the king of I is killed, every person is killed, everything as God said, gone, push in fire. Only the booty, the good stuff, God said you can keep it, enjoy, have fun, right? Hallelujah. Expect God to work differently in a different time of need. Amen. Hallelujah. We need to be open always and very sensitive to the various ways that God might use. Sometimes it's a miraculous thing like Jericho. And sometimes God wants you and I to battle and fight hard and go and capture. Amen. Both Hallelujah. I can see the supremacy of God in both the areas. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. <clears throat> see, the fact is that when we stop changing, we stop growing. 
Hallelujah. Change is the only thing that is permanent. That's what they say in the secular world. But there is also one very good dear saying to me about change. And uh, some of you know what I'm going to say. That, hallelujah, the process you use to get to the future is the future you get. Right? So don't undermine the process. Don't undermine the new strategy that God has given you. Because if you want a new uh, battle, a new victory, then you have to have a new strategy. If you use the same old, you will get the same old. If you want new, you got to use new. So go with the flow that God gives you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. See, our, we have many battles like that. A battle in prayer. Not every prayer needs the same kind uh, of reasoning or word of God. Every battle, every prayer has a different uh, strategy of prayer. Amen. How many of you agree with me? How many times have you yielded to the doing of God's spirit and then God has shown you something really funny or weird to do? And you did it like Joshua and it worked. Right? Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. See, certain prayers will require submission from our end. But certain prayers, God will say, go bind the, uh, bind the old man. So you're going to have to do some binding and some losing so that that will be done in the spirit realm too. Right? Sometimes you have to comply to God. Sometimes you have to go and conquer. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Every, every battle, every prayer, every situation needs a fresh touch from the presence of God. Amen. You and I must always be eager to know what is God's will for the next battle. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. If you think that, you know, your future is a little bit stinky, same old, same old, don't know what's going to happen, I can tell you that you're not praying enough. Mm -hmm. Hmm? Go to God in prayer. Go to God in prayer. He'll give you a new strategy to attack your eye. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. And let's turn to verses 30 to 35. And this is the most important part. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. And that brings me to my third point. Give a new commitment to God. Amen. Give a new commitment to God. Hallelujah. Verses 30 to 35. Let's read. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. So Joshua built an altar to the Lord God of Israel in Mount Ebal. Where did he build it? Mount Ebal. Mount Ebal. Everyone say Mount Ebal. Mount Ebal. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. As Moses, the servant of Lord, had commanded the children of Israel, as it is written in the book of law of Moses, an altar of whole stones over which no man has wielded an iron tool. And they offered on it burnt offerings to the Lord and sacrificed peace offerings there. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Now, after conquering I, the entire Israel walks a 30-mile walk to a place called the Valley of Shechem. The valley of Shechem is in between two mountains, Mount Ebal and Mount Gerizim. Everyone say Mount Ebal. Mount, Ebal. Mount, Gerizim. Mount Gerizim. Shechem. Shechem. And Shechem, Mount Ebal, and Mount Gerizim are like an amphitheater setting. It's a 20, 25, the, the, the valley of Shechem is two to three miles wide. And the mountains are spread up 25 to 30 miles. There are, we're talking about 6 million Israelites. Everybody has to be in that area. So that's why God has created this natural amphitheater for them to stand there. Shechem is the most important. When you look at the map once again, the Shechem is at the heart of Israel. It's right in the center. As I said, every battle after I was just a strategic advantage for Joshua and, and the army. I was the most important. Right now, they have captured the main, the heart of Canaan right now. And that's where they are standing. On one side, there is a rugged, rocky Mount Ebal. And on the other side, there is this lush, green Mount Gerizim. Okay, so now, stay with me. <clears throat> if you are going to be a winner, the centerpiece in your life must be 
praise and worship. They are standing in the heart of the land of their promise. And they are praising and worshiping. If you are going to be the winner, your heart, in the center of your heart, must be an altar of praise and worship. Must be an altar of peace offerings and burnt offerings. Hallelujah. Must give the sacrifice that pleases the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Romans 12, chapter, uh, verse 1. Hallelujah. Offer your bodies as living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to the Lord. Hallelujah. For this is your true and proper worship. Hallelujah. If you are going to be a winner, then your sacrifice is going to be your own old self. Your sacrifice is going to be the one that draws you to the flesh, to the world, to the devil. It has to be pleasing to God in accordance to the way God has ordained. And that has to be the heart of your promised land. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. See, <clears throat> we have positional holiness because of what Jesus did on the cross of Calvary. Right? Turn with me to Romans chapter 6. Verse 6 and 7, hallelujah. Romans 6, 6 and 7, hallelujah. Knowing this, that our old man was crucified with him, that the body of sin might be done away with, that you should no longer be slaves of sin, hallelujah. This is our positional standing in eyes of God. Because of, the, uh, because of what Jesus did on the cross of Calvary, your old self is gone, your old sins are gone. And so we receive this positional holiness because of Jesus' sacrifice. And then also Colossians chapter 3, verses 1 onwards. We all know we are studying pleasing God in our series. Hallelujah. We are. Then comes practical holiness. You and I must also practice the holiness that you and I are called unto. Thank you, Lord. We are to put the flesh to death every day anew one day one battle another day another battle we must fight this battle every day with a new strategy hallelujah thank you jesus see the secret lies in being able to kill the flesh like god does once and forever so that it will not rise up again hallelujah thank you lord and we cannot crucify our flesh by gratifying it you know, you might think that once is okay, twice is okay. But sin is not dealt by gratifying it. Sin is only dealt by crucifying it. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Victory must be followed by a sacrifice that is pleasing to God. Amen. Joshua and the army are doing the sacrifice that is pleasing to God right in the heart of their promised land, right in the heart of Canaan. Hallelujah. Remember to give thanks. Thank you, Lord. The time came to stop at Ebal and worship. Hallelujah. Most of the times after we have a stupendous victory, we want to celebrate, right? But this is what Israel and Joshua is laying before us. That remember, the first thing is give praise where it is due. Amen. Give honor where it is due. Hallelujah. Praise Jesus for the victory that you have had in your life. Thank you, Jesus. And then turn with me to verses 32 to 35, Joshua chapter 8. Hallelujah. And there, in the presence of the children of Israel, Joshua wrote on the stones a copy of the law of Moses, which he had written. Hallelujah. So this is now something new. Joshua remembers and copies the law, hallelujah, of Moses on another set of stones. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. <clears throat> Romans chapter 8 and verses 3 and 4. We all know what it says. It says, what the law was powerless to do because it was weakened by the flesh, God did by sending his son who condemned sin in the flesh by his own death. Hallelujah. The law was written down on the tablets of stone. But I want you to encourage that you and I must write down this law on our hearts instead. 
right? Because our flesh is weak. It cannot uh, outrun the curses of the law. It's only Jesus that can remove the guilt, the sin, and also the effect of the sin from you and I. Amen. Hallelujah. So that law must be written on my heart and your heart if we were to be a people who are victorious. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. So now what they are doing here, verses 33 to 35, it may sound like a ritualistic thing. One says and the other says. One speaks and the other speaks. But it has deep roots into the law of God. Turn with me to Deuteronomy chapter 11 and verses 26 and uh, to 28. Deuteronomy chapter 11 verses 26 to 28. <coughs> and Moses is saying this to the Israelites before they have ever entered the promised land. He says, behold, I set before you today a blessing and a curse. The blessing if you obey the commands of the Lord your God, which I command you today. And the curse if you do not obey the commandments of the Lord your God, but turn aside from the way which I command you today to go after other gods which you have not known. Now it shall be when the Lord your God has brought you into the land which you are going to possess, which is right now in the history of Israel, that you shall put the blessing on Mount Gerizim and the curse on Mount Ebal. So what they are doing right now, Moses had already instructed them. Moses had said, put the blessings on Mount Gerizim, put the curses on on Mount Ebal. You know, when I, when I was reading through some Hebrew scriptures, Talmud and Torah are the two portions. Talmud gives a great detail of how this thing they did. So this is how. In the valley of Shechem, there is an Ark of Covenant. Around the Ark of Covenant, the priests stand facing the Ark. Around the priests, all the Levites stand facing the Ark. And half of the tribes of Israel, six tribes are on Mount Ebal, six tribes are on Mount Gerizim. Okay, now when they, uh, they now turn, when you go home, read Deuteronomy chapters 27 and 28. All the, this, all what is going on here is described there. Moses told them what to speak when you enter the promised land. How to remember the blessings and the curses of the law when you enter the promised land. So what do they do? When they are speaking the blessing, the, the priests are re speaking it. They turn to Mount Gerizim. And all the people on the slopes of Mount Gerizim, when the priests say that blessed be the man, blah, 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 the Israelites say, Amen, let it be so. Then they turn to Mount Ebal and they say, if you do not follow the laws of God, you shall be cursed like this and this and this. And the people standing on Mount Ebal say, Amen. amen. What does Amen mean? Let it be so. Hallelujah. So the people are giving a corporate covenant they are renewing their covenant saying that we will follow you god if we follow then we know that these blessings are ours and let it be so we are more than happy to get it but if we do not follow then these curses are ours as well so it's a memor memoria before their eyes remember i said mount ebal was rocky and rugged it represents the dryness of the curse. Mount Gerizim is lush and green. It represents the blessing. So when the people are standing there, it's like a visual representation of the blessings and curse before them. Amen. And they will never forget what God has asked them to do. Amen. Renew your commitment. Let the heart of praise and worship be at the center of the land that you want to possess. Amen. That is what the Israelites are doing here. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. The 12 blessings and the 12 curses from Deuteronomy chapter 27 and 28. And all the people are saying, Amen. What they are doing, hallelujah, as a nation, as God's chosen people, they are renewing their commitment, remembering the covenant and its promises. They are also making a public 
declaration of their allegiance to the God of Israel. They say that, Lord, whatever may come, we will not stop following you. Amen. Hallelujah. They are giving their commitment to follow this Yahweh God who has now given the promised land to them. Amen. Thank you, Lord. <clears throat> Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. See, just like water, your tendency and my tendency is always to flow down. Just like a boat without an anchor will always drift away. You will never hear a boat drifting towards the shore. It will always drift away from the shore. When we don't have the anchor of Lord Jesus Christ, we will always tend to drift away. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. More so in the times of victory. Because there is always a danger of being puffed up. And God says, in the middle of your victory, remember the praise. Give the holy and acceptable sacrifice. Renew your covenant. Remember the blessings. Remember the curse, lest you become a part of that curse. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Master. Hallelujah. We need the covering sacrifice of Jesus over every sin that endangers us. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Remember, <clears throat> on Mount Ebal, turn with me to verse 30 again. It says, Joshua built an altar of the Lord, God of Israel, on Mount Ebal. Mount Ebal represents curse. The sacrifice must be given to turn that curse into your blessing. And that sacrifice was already given by the Lamb of God. If you, uh, if you are found in the fold of God, if you have received Jesus, I praise God for you because you have made the right choice. But if you have not received it, now is the time. Look at Ebal and run to Gerizim. Amen. Don't stay where you are. Let your praise arise from the heart of your victory. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Look at Ebal and run to Gerizim. See, if Christ is not preached, I haven't preached at all. It doesn't make sense. No laws, no rituals, nothing that the word of God says makes sense without Christ being the fulfillment of each and every one. If Christ is present in your victory, then you have won indeed. Amen. Look at Ebal and run to Gerizim. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. How can you and I regain the lost grounds? Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. New beginnings, new strategies, new commitment. New beginning new strategies, new commitment. To God be all the glory. May you be blessed through the week and use these principles to defeat the enemy of your soul. Amen. Jesus' name, amen. 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 Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Thank you, Master. Thank you, Jesus. Let us, let us stand at our place. And let's just lift up our hands in the presence of God, asking his grace and mercy of our life. Lord, once again, Lord, we want to say thank you uh, for your son, Lord Jesus Christ, oh my Lord. We want to say thank you uh, for the cross of Calvary, Father God. Lord, your word says the one who was hanged on the tree is cursed, oh my Lord. The curse of the law was taken away from us by the sacrifice of your own uh, holy and begotten son, Lord Jesus Christ, Father God. Lord, his blood was shed, oh my Lord, hallelujah. His body was broken for us, Father God. Uh, so that we are redeemed, oh my Lord. We are healed, oh my Lord. We are added into your kingdom, Father God. He was abundant, Father God, so that we are reconciled, Father God. Uh, he was punished, oh my Lord, so that we can, uh, we, can, we can be added into your kingdom, Father God. Hallelujah. We want to say thank you for that cross of Calvary, oh my Lord. Thank you that you have made a covenant with us because your word says you have made a new covenant in the blood of Lord Jesus Christ, oh my Lord. And as we partake in this communion, Father God, according to your word, we examine ourselves, Father God. God. And when we examine ourselves, Father God, 
Lord. Uh, we find that we need your grace once again, Father God, oh my Lord. Uh, to grace to overcome the challenges that comes our way. To, to grace to, 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 to uh, be victorious over the trials and temptations that are there, Father God. Uh, to grace, Father God, uh, to move ahead and fall down, or get up from the falling down of the temptation and sin to our life, Father God. Lord, we bring, Father God, and come to the throne of grace and receive strength, receive forgiveness, receive upliftment, receive encouragement, Father God. Hallelujah, Lord. Lord, forgive our trespasses, our Lord. Once again, make us new, oh my Lord. If we have failed, Father God, we need to know and depend depend on you, oh my Lord, that you do not want us fallen down, oh my Lord. You are the one who's going to raise us up, oh my Lord. Hallelujah. Our testimony is today that you raise me up, oh my Lord. Hallelujah, Lord. Our testimony is, Lord, you, are, you change, you turned our mourning into dancing, oh my Lord. Our testimony is those who saw with crying and tears will reap with joy, oh my Lord. Our testimony is, oh my Lord, that we are the new creation, oh my Lord. Behold, you made everything new, oh my Lord. Whatever was behind, whatever is past is gone and overcome, Father God. As Paul said, we also say, hallelujah, I've been crucified with Christ and I no longer live with the Christ who dwells in me lives, oh my Lord. Hallelujah. Our testimony is, oh my Lord, one who is within us is greater than the one who is outside in the world, Lord. Our testimony is, hallelujah, the Holy Spirit that raised Lord Jesus Christ from the dead who dwells in us, oh my Lord. We are the temple of the Holy Spirit. We are the blood-bought people. We are your prized possession. We are royal priesthood, oh my Lord. Hallelujah. And we are forgiven, a blood-bought, spirit-baptized believers, Father God. He's our testimony right now, my Lord. As we come into your presence, Father God, we receive health and healing that comes from you, oh my Lord. Hallelujah, Lord. Hallelujah, Lord. As your word says, oh my Lord, I will look into the mountains. Our help does not come from sanitizer. Our help comes from you, oh my Lord. You are our protector. The blood of the Lamb is our protector, Father God. Hallelujah. And we walk with that confidence, oh my Lord. We are not afraid of any virus right now, my Lord. But we proclaim that we are brought, we are protected by the blood of Lord Jesus Christ. Our bodies are healed, oh my Lord. I pray in Jesus' name, every sickness, every infirmities, every disease, every, 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 every iniquities, Father God, be flushed out in the name of Lord Jesus Christ, Father God. We also pray, Father God, in Jesus' name, if there's any mental illnesses, Father God, Lord, we speak and rise up against it in the name of Lord Jesus Christ, Father God. In Jesus' name, hallelujah, we renew our mind by the washing of the word, oh my Lord. We speak and declare that the, we have the mind of Christ, oh my Lord. Hallelujah. We are made new by the precious blood of Lord Jesus Christ. Lord, we speak at the spirit of depression, flee, oh my Lord. And the spirit of discouragement, the spirit of suicide in Jesus' name, never not come near to any of us, oh my Lord. We pray in Jesus' name, oh my Lord. The spirit of self-doubt, oh my Lord, will not come near us, oh my Lord. But we will walk in the confidence in the blood of Lord Jesus Christ. Also pray in Jesus' name, oh my Lord. Or through your through your uh, right righteous right and all our needs are met, oh my Lord. Lord, Lord, your word says, hallelujah, that Lord is my shepherd and I shall not lack, hallelujah, Lord. Uh, that is our testimony, oh my Lord. Your goodness and mercy follows after us, oh my Lord. Your blessings runs and chase over us, oh my Lord. Hallelujah, Lord, we are blessed by the blessing of that you placed on Mount Gerizim. We say yes and amen to that, Father God. I pray and we declare that, oh my Lord, we are the people who are obedient children, oh my Lord. We will not be enticed by the wiles of the enemy and the temporary gratification of our friends flesh, oh my Lord, but we shall overcome and we will we will not succumb to the uh, strategies of the enemy, but we will walk according to your word, Father God. I pray in Jesus' name, every family that is represented here be blessed in the mighty name of Lord Jesus Christ. All the needs be met according to riches of your glory in the name of Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Let there be breakthroughs, oh my Lord. Financial breakthrough, immigration breakthrough, health breakthrough, family breakthrough, relational breakthrough, emotional breakthrough in the name of Lord Jesus Christ, Father God. Hallelujah, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, Lord, the, 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 the eye that we could not be victorious over before, Father God, we walk and we go ahead at I, oh my Lord, and we win it by the power of the Holy Spirit, Father God. Hallelujah, Lord. The relationship that we're not reconciled for generations, Father God, we are the bridge builders, oh my Lord, and we will, Lord, your word says, blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be God's sons of God, oh my Lord. Hallelujah. We will not create the disputes, oh my Lord, but we will build bridges, oh my Lord 
Lord is my prayer right now, Lord. I pray, Lord, every family be blessed, every child, every elder uh, be blessed in the mighty name of Lord Jesus Christ, Father God. I pray this week will be blessed, oh my Lord. We will be not disturbed by watching the news, but we will be encouraged by watching, reading your word, Father God, is my prayer, oh my Lord. We will be very, we will give our commitment to follow after you fully, oh my Lord. And as your word teaches us, Caleb's strength was not depleted at 85. We will not succumb, hallelujah, to any sicknesses or premature death, oh my Lord. But we shall live long, oh my Lord, and do great things for your kingdom is our prayer, my Lord. Once again, Lord, our our prayer is, my Lord, let your kingdom come, oh my Lord, and let your will be done in and through us. In Jesus' precious name we all pray. Amen. 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 The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his contents upon you and give you peace. Our Dev Abno Jaib Jopram, Prabhu Sukhrishni Grupa, and the Pavitra Atmani Sangat, Ab Sarvani Sate, Amnati Sada Sarakar Sudhi Hojo. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for being with us. Shalom blessings to you and your families. Thank you, Jesus.